People don't know what I look like until now. Until they start going to the movies. They're gonna see my face. Big deal. Yo, what's good? <laughs> OMG Hawk. One man game. Back at y'all with another one. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Got to see who they needed to, eat what they wanted to, drink as much as they wanted to, make it home safe and all that. Hope it was good for everybody, for real. Today's video, we gonna be profiling the life and untimely death of Jalen Everett. Also known to fans and members of the upstate New York rap community as the Flair Two Times. Two times. Shoot my shine, these bullets be hollow. From the road, this shit lit like Chicago. All my bitches so bad they can model. And I stay with the dry like a pow. Jalen was born on April 28, 1995, and he hailed from Rochester, New York. It's the rock in here. The Rock is the fourth largest city in New York State by population and sits right on Lake Ontario. By 2012, Jalen was a 16-year-old with rap aspirations, trying to find himself musically in a region usually overshadowed by the state's hip-hop mecca to its south. Undeterred, Jalen would continue making music and dropping videos over the years, eventually sticking with the name Le Flair two times and amassing an impressive catalog of music along with some notable performances opening up for Chief Keith, Wiz Khalifa, and others. Le Flair's hard work and consistency gained him a buzz upstate and his career seemed on the up and up until the summer of 2015 when tragedy rocked Rochester to its core and left the fate of Le Flair in jeopardy. And we continue to follow that breaking news out of Rochester for you right now. An active crime scene still stands this morning outside of the Boys and Girls Club on Genesee Street. Seven people were shot there before midnight. Two of them died at the scene, a third at the hospital overnight. This morning, the person behind that shooting has still not been caught. Seven eyewitnesses. On August 9th, 2015, at around 11 p.m., a large group of people, mostly youth, were leaving a summer league basketball game at the Boys and Girls Club of Rochester. As the large group piles out the exit, still feeling the excitement of the evening, the car sped by, firing 28 rounds in 8 seconds, sending people scattering wherever they could. Jonah Barley, 17, Raekwon Menegal, 19, and Johnny Johnson, 25, died as a result of their injuries. Four others were wounded in the drive-by and survived their injuries. The callousness of the shooting and the amount of victims shook the city and the community was outraged. Less than a week later, Rochester police arrested 21-year-old Johnny Blackshell Jr. About a month after that, they also arrested 20-year-old LaFlair at the Buffalo airport allegedly attempting to flee the state. In October, they were both charged with three counts of first-degree murder, assault, and weapons charges related to the Boys and Girls Club shooting. Just before Christmas that same year, police arrested 18-year-old Michael Mathis, charging him with murder as well in connection to the shooting. Blackshell went to trial first and was convicted in June of 2016 to receive his life without parole for the murders. Although Blackshell blew trial, the odds would fare better for LaFleur. He was found guilty in November, but would receive a Christmas miracle in December as the judge would set that verdict aside and declare a mistrial. A juror informed the judge of some comments another juror made and the judge deemed that the sworn juror possessed a racial prejudice and wasn't fit to serve on the jury. The flair was tried again and in January of 2017, he was acquitted on all charges related to the shooting. Michael Mathis was also later acquitted of all charges. So it's back to the streets of The Rock and right back to the music for the Flair two times who didn't waste any time releasing music. He released videos back to back such as First Day Out and North Side Nigga and was definitely using the publicity of the trials to his advantage. Not guilty on all counts. That's the verdict from a Monroe County jury in the triple murder trial of Jalen Everett. Everett walked out of Monroe County court and jail a free man. He was charged in the 2015 mass shooting on Genesee Street but was acquitted on three counts of second degree murder and three counts of assault. Hey. Hey, Le Flair, two times. Le Flair's buzz grew and his videos and tracks were getting impressive views and streams. It seems Rochester's Mr. Untouchable was on his way up in the game. He had an extensive catalog, a fascinating story, and the ability to consistently produce music. 
unfortunately for him, his career would be cut short on May 4th, 2019. That breaking news tonight, the man acquitted in the Genesee Street Boys and Girls Club triple homicide has been shot and killed in the city of Rochester. Atia Collins joins us live right now. Atia, what can you tell us about the situation? That's right, the scene behind me is still going on. This is the intersection of Dewey and McGee, where police responded to gunshot noises in the area. They found one male, which has later been identified as Jalen Everett. The flare two times was in a car around the area of 200 McGee Avenue in Rochester when he was shot at least once in the upper torso. He was driven around the corner to the intersection of Dewey and Electric Avenues where he was taken to the hospital but died of his injuries. He was only 24 years old. Sadly, reports indicate he left behind two sons, one of which was a newborn when he was murdered. I have to be honest, I hadn't heard of the flare two times before coming across his case and doing the research, I gotta say his catalog was impressive and the presentation was great. It was real apparent he took this rap as serious and he was invested. It's too bad he lost his life the way he did, right there on Dewey, which is where he was claiming. I couldn't confirm if his murder was get back for the Boys and Girls Club murders. As of this time, it remains unsolved, so we don't have answers, but I don't know. Even if he was truly guilt-free and just glorifying the situation for his rap image, do you think that was enough to make someone want to get at him? Do you think it was payback or something else? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. OMG.